Oh, hey nerds, Sage is here. I'm about to go and level a bunch of units, but before I do that, I wanted to talk to you guys, because technically, <laughs> we're one day into the new year of uh, Heroes. Oh boy, a whole new year. I'm sure you're all excited. Yep, really, really excited. <laughs> Are you guys excited for the third and fourth year? That's when they run out of ideas and just start making, you know, a bunch of Lucinas. No, I'm kidding. They're already doing that. Anyways, <laughs> this is another one of those good old-fashioned sages complains about everything. Joking, joking, but I want to have a discussion. I want to talk to you guys about what you want in the second year of Heroes. And for me, there is a few things, of course. We've already kind of gone over a few things, you know, these stone units, changing the, you know, four or five star pool, which will probably never happen. And just, you know, a bunch of other stuff, but, uh... The one thing I want to talk about is something that I've noticed as I've been leveling up a lot more units and giving them abilities and realizing that more now than ever, well, you know, also, wait, before we begin, Sumia, where are you? Come home soon, okay? Doesn't have to be in a Fates banner, just in some form or fashion, please. I miss you. But no. <laughs> Anyways, so, as I've been leveling up units and, you know, going through all of the banners and having all that fun stuff, and yes, Hero Fest is cool. I managed to roll nothing, thumbs up, but uh, I, 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 I was weak, I used my orbs, got nothing, it happens. Still, nonetheless, let's, uh, let's talk about the things that I've noticed. So, when the game launched nearly a year ago, what do I mean nearly, a year ago and a day, there were only 50 or so, from what I recall, I believe the number was actually a ba you know, a spot on 50 five star units that were available and all of them technically had skills that were already in the game and shared by a lot of units in the game right now boy has that changed outside of of course a few characters you know Hector Takumi things like that that had really amazing skills and were touted for their prowess in that uh, of course Takumi's kind of fallen on a bit of a you know problem there but uh, Hector is still around for that and distant counter is still a very viable ability but that doesn't change the fact, because now, <clears throat> when you look at this, and you look at all of the five stars, obviously there's a lot more. But the thing is, with this, of course, came, you know, not only a saturated pool, that, that's just kind of how it goes with gotchas, but uh, also, what came with this is the problem that a lot of these characters have a really powerful passive list. I, just to give you an example, you know, before, when the game launched, we only really had Darting Blow and death blow and those were powerful abilities because you know speed and attack when initiating were great and then along com you know along comes abilities just like oh let's say here uh let me just get get old good old-fashioned lynn out here there's swift sparrow that came out and that was uh, that brought out that was brought out on a seasonal character that was brought on lucina when she came out and well you know this is the idea characters have a lot more premium abilities especially for you and those people who spend money or get lucky with their orb pools, more often than not, characters, the newer ones, have these premium abilities. Let's not forget the seasonal banner um, or banners that have these sort of options. It's taken us a long time to actually get, you know, easy, easy access to something like Infantry Pulse or, God, um, even now, Life and Death. Life and Death took almost a year. And this is just kind of showing the problem that kind of progresses here. I feel that if we are going to keep, you know, in line with the premium characters that keep coming out and being a part of five stars, and it's going to keep happening just because, well, yeah, gotcha. Still, I feel that maybe it may be a good idea to reassess feathers and how they function right now, because I'll be fairly honest, uh, a lot of the characters that you upgrade from four to five stars more often than not do not really do anything outside of possessing maybe one skill that you're going for, or maybe a weapon you want to give to someone else. And it's kind of a detriment because a lot of these characters now that come from summoning pools more often than not, they have most of their base kit already included. This isn't something that's just like, oh, in the early days where every character kind of had maybe one or two abilities and sometimes those abilities were terrible. Um, and, you know, skill inheritance could patch up a lot of that. I feel it's devaluing feathers to constantly just keep making these premium units and sticking them in there and five star only. A lot of the powerful abilities from certain characters are only five star, you know, five star, five star available. And that is a 
well, that's that's just kind of a big detriment to uh, feathers because as they continue to add these units, the value of feathers just continues to drop. And I know a lot of people who want to level up, you know, their units and get them up to five stars. And it's probably going to take some of these characters. But the thing is, it doesn't take feathers to get these powerful abilities. It takes cold hard cash. And more often than not, or, you know, <laughs> cold hard luck, I guess. And especially when it comes to things like Legendary Banner and all that fun stuff, there are a lot of characters that are valuable. But uh, a lot of them are valuable for their abilities and the fact that they are five star only. And it really sucks for some certain, you know, certain characters who you could probably, I mean, you, you can get them up to five stars and it's great. That's something that should be done because it's something that's amazing. And yes, I know feathers have been a lot more. I wouldn't say a lot more accessible, but they have been more accessible lately, you know, with things like Tempest Trials and, of course, um, you know, Voting Gauntlet. Still, though, I feel it might be a good idea to reassess this because outside of maybe using it for maybe quick repost or maybe life and death if you feel like it or, you know, insert skill A, B, C here. It's just, it's, I don't really see much use out of just keeping it at such a high cost. People like leveling up their characters and putting them on a pedestal, and this will really help out a lot of the players who need it. That's just my idea, is to reduce the cost of feathers from 4 to 5, from 20,000 to something else. Um, hell, 15,000, 10,000. That would be a good option for everyone, because... It just allows people to have more flexibility, especially when it comes to feathers, and especially nowadays when most skills and passives that are really valuable are really only accessible from five-star units, occasional five-star units that come from the four and three-star pool, but mostly from more premium units. That's just my opinion on that, though, guys. I don't know what you think, but uh, maybe I'm just complaining. And hey, look, there's... There's Oliver. Hey, it's far too shabby for the likes of me. Oh, God. Needs refinement. Yeah, can we also talk about refinement real quick? Can I get more refining stones? Or just, in general, more divine dew? <laughs> no, seriously. Um, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot more difficult to, <laughs> to do that kind of stuff. Like, seriously, divine dew takes forever. Holy crap. And we're getting new enhancements for so many units. Maybe they should step that up a bit, too. I don't know. Well, chances are they're going to be doing a lot more events now, because let's hope that, uh, that, um, what is it? <laughs> the survey they did a few months back will give us a good idea of what's coming and what to expect in the future, because there's a lot to look forward to, and there's a lot that I will enjoy as time goes on. But I figured I would just run that idea by you. Maybe you can agree with me, or maybe you'll disagree. It's fine. I just wanted to see what you guys thought, because I still think 20000 is kind of costly for the amount that it is, but, uh, hey, especially now with, uh, units, you know, as they are, because let's just face it, Understood. Brave Ike's kind of really powerful, and the only way to really get him is to <laughs> pay money, or, you know, choose him for your free summon when you start the game, because I think you can get a free summon of him at the start, if I recall correctly. Someone, someone tell me if that's still a thing. Anyways, <laughs> that was my ramble for today. Hope you guys enjoyed, and, well, that's just it. Alrighty. Catch you nerds later. Thanks for watching. Sorry if this was a bunch of rambling nonsense or who knows. <laughs> Love you guys very much and see you all very soon.